Hello everyone, and welcome back to another video on solar astronomy by using equipment available to amateur astronomers. And today I will be discussing how the Skywatcher Solar Quest works based on observations on, on uh, the mount itself, how it behaves, and uh, on my knowledge with using other mounts such as the equatorial mount, the Skywatcher being a mount that tracks on the altitude and azimuth. So uh, let's get going. Now, the first thing that we need to explain and understand is the basic principles behind auto guiding. Now, this involves finding the sun's position and tracking it. Now, it obviously can extend to any astronomical object, any star, planet, or solar system body. Uh, and one of the approaches is to use a alt azimuth mount, which uses two axes, the azimuth and the altitude, uh, to orientate and to track. So this can be done uh, by starting from the GPS position, um, which enables us to calculate the coordinates at, um, of, a, of the sun in this particular X aspect at any point during the day. Uh, the azimuth is a left-right movement, um, so and it represents the angle with respect to the true geographical north, and altitude is an up-down movement and, and uh, represents how high up in the sky the sun is, um, with zero at the horizon. So um, now with this in mind, we have to remember that refractors and, and my equipment, which is a Lund 40, um, is, is a refractor, they produce an upside down image. So uh, down and up are flipped. But because the B600 filter uses a star diagonal, uh, this problem is fixed. However, we do get a mirrored image, um, which means that right and left are flipped. So um, if you want to get an accurate view of the sun on your computer, you need, for instance, in sharp cap to horizontally flip the image um, and that will give you the right um, uh, orientation. So uh, with that in mind, the steps that we usually follow uh, when, when tracking uh, using the altitude and azimuth are first to find the GPS position uh, and, and the solar quest mount has a GPS module installed. Uh, obviously for best results, it takes about two to three minutes from my room to get the signal, but outside it's really fast. Um, you need to place the mount outside. So uh, now the second step, once you have the GPS position is to compute the altitude and azimuth of the sun uh, based on the local latitude and longitude and also current local time. So um, this is all nice and ideal. However, um, azimuth is usually computed relatively to the geographical north, and this cannot be done by using the GPS alone. It requires a compass uh, and magnetic declination map to convert the magnetic north to uh, the true north, or it requires Polaris, the pole star, the north star, to uh, identify it and to perform what's called the polar alignment, and I will talk about that later. So obviously orientation sensors exist, but their accuracy varies and cannot be used for our purposes. Now think about the smartphones, various models, different sensors. If you use a SkyChart app, um, you may get various results 
more or less accurate depending on the model that you are using because they use different sensors so um, obviously uh, this becomes problematic and be uh, not sure and it probably uh, doesn't have uh, the solar quest doesn't have such a sensor installed it only has a gps module so a working solution is to compute the sun's altitude only and then once you have this altitude just point the mount to aim at that altitude and then rotate 360 the mount till you find the brightest source of light so um, because you know that the sun is somewhere at that altitude by rotating it 360 it eventually finds it so the altitude is, is easier to find uh, for that we only need the sun's declination delta and the solar hour angle gamma uh, which is based uh, actually on the local time so um, both can be used uh, and can be determined by using the present day so uh, there is a formula this is the formula here it's a simplified one for computing the declination and this is also a simple formula to determine the um, solar hour angle so once you have delta and gamma you can plug this in in this formula which uses trigonometric functions and you find the sun's altitude now remember everything must be done in radians um, not degrees trigonometric functions use radians so uh, with this in mind uh, we find the altitude alpha now remember these are simplifications the so basically they have some errors attached to them so because of this we need to talk about the accuracy now obviously the accuracy of, of the altitude depends on the individual components and in our case it's the declination and the solar hour angle um, what are some simplifications in our computations so for instance um, in case of the solar hour angle we completely ignore the equation of time uh, which says that um, local noon uh, does not always happen at 12 p.m. sharp this is because the eccentricity of the orbit uh, and, and the varying speed of the earth in that orbit you can see here uh, for instance if we take a picture at 12 o'clock the sun is uh, not always assuming it should be right here in the middle along the year at 12 p.m the sun's position varies and it forms this nice uh, shape which is um, a solar analema so um, this is one of the simplifications the other one is obviously uh, in the declination formula and and you can see here uh, various formulas for for the declination and also an elaborate algorithm called PCA and you see here that they slightly uh, differ they don't completely overlap uh, and to give you an example uh, for instance the formula I used um, produces for the equinox a value of minus 0 0.9 uh, whereas it should be zero degrees because of the equinox the sun is on the equator and therefore it should be zero degrees so um, this is one of the reasons i believe that even when it finds the sun it's not always centered uh, in the image and you need to do some manual adjustments to uh, focus it so why not an equatorial mount i mean obviously these formulas come with some errors but 
it does work quite well. I mean, it always finds the sun, even if it's not centered in the image and all you need to do is do some manual adjustments. To be honest, I would have liked to have a USB connection to my computer from the mount to be able to control the mount automatically from my device uh, for a fully remote controlled mount. But it doesn't allow you that so uh, if you like that you need to use a, a normal uh, mount not a mount dedicated for solo tracking and this mount requires depending on the version that you are using uh, an alignment um, by using stars or the north pole and it's basically um, then you'll be able to find the sun now this is an alt azimuth mount. An alternative for Skywatcher would have been to produce a solar um, equatorial mount, but even if they're simple, simpler because they track on a single axis, basically um, once you fix the other axis to point towards the uh, true uh, geographic north, uh, that one doesn't change and all the mount does is tracking uh, on a given declination line. So if you have the declination of the sun, it can track it uh, nice and easy. However, the problem is finding the north during the day because we use the mount during the day and to find the north, you need to perform a procedure which is called polar alignment. Uh, polar alignment involves the pole star, polaris, north star, which cannot be done during the uh, day. Even if you have a, a compass, you still have problems with the uh, magnetic north, uh, converting that to the true geographic north. So an alt azimuth mount is the easier solution here, and it does a good job, and this is how I believe it does it. Now, if you enjoyed the video, click subscribe, like, and uh, check out uh, my previous and also my upcoming recordings.